custom Superstar Billy Graham figure. Part two, he's painted. Part two to my custom LJN inspired Bendy's WWF Wrestling Superstars Superstar Billy Graham figure. And I think he fits in pretty well with my other Bendy's right here. And we're, we're looking kind of far away. We're going to go in with a closer shot in just a bit. Uh, my painting game has grown like leaps and bounds uh, with this figure. So that's kind of what I want to talk about. I covered all how I sculpted them in the first video. So let's talk about what I had to do. in comparison with my other LJN Bendy figures and I think I captured the spirit what he's supposed to look like pretty close and I think I also captured the spirit of what his face looked like pretty good too uh, some, like when you put him in some shadows I don't like the shadows underneath his nose but kind of warps my sculpt but holding them like that oh my god came out really good uh, painting that was uh, that was a bit of an adventure a little slightly a little too glossy for how I would have wanted but every time I look at the figures eh, I can change this I can change that and I think I, I might run over them again with a thousand grit sandpaper knock that gloss back a little bit but I don't think I could have done much better on this. This this came out to about like 95% of what was in my head. The artistic decisions, I did not do uh, tie-dye on his legs. I used a reference photo and he had an outfit just like this. Um, the WWE current figures, they did one not too long back of him. And they did the, the green and the red. And they also did uh, the tie-dye. I, I didn't do that one, but this is kind of his, maybe his most iconic color scheme from around that era. So that's the one I picked. Uh, I actually lost some detail with all the painting. Got a little thick. I lost some. I, I sculpted his ears pretty damn perfectly and kind of, you don't really see it too much. There. I lost some detail. Lost a little detail on his hair. Uh, maybe a little too thick around the fingers, but there was a lot of trial and error. The The next figure I got is going to come out even better because the, the Punisher figure that came out before this that I did, that did not come out as good as this. Other artistic decisions, shoelaces or no shoelaces. Some of the LJN figures didn't have shoelaces. I thought it made it pop if I put shoelaces on it. Piper did... And Beefcake did. Iron Sheik, there was two versions. One with, one without. Hogan, one with, one without. Uh, Jesse the Body had uh, a little bit of tie-dye, but I was only on the larger size figure. The smaller size figure didn't have any paint apps on his tights, although Iron Sheik did. So that was another thing. Some figures had nipples, some didn't. I thought if I put it on there, it might look silly, so I didn't. Here's a look at his back. The thick paint covered up uh, a lot of other stuff, imperfections I did, but uh, that was one of the good things, even though I lost some detail on his ears. Eh, it didn't come out too bad on his fingers. My first round, my first draft of painting him, he was well too shiny. He was a lot shinier than this, and I did not like that. Um, I used... It was it a satin gloss spray paint and that came out too glossy but then I ran over some some uh, like a higher grit sandpaper and I kind of knocked it back but then every time I did that then I would sand through like his elbow back to the the primer and it just became a disaster so I took a chance with this Tamiya flat acrylic clear 
and that gave me the look I wanted because that, although it's a little too shiny, it does look kind of like rubber. It gave him a rubbery look, and I made the, the legs purposely a little bit glossier so it would look like paint on top of rubber. Same with the, the, the boots. So it's very light in here, so kind of deceptive of what it looks like close up in real life. As far as the acrylics, I used cheap Walmart paint, and then I had, I couldn't find a shade of skin. I didn't want to mix up some colors, because every time I would put another coat on, it, it would be inconsistent. I bought this. I went to a million art stores. I found this at Hobby Lobby, Flat Flash, because other stuff I had was too pink, and I needed to look kind of like a suntan. And do the boots, I used paint pen for his shoelaces. And then I had I also used the paint pen for his eyes, and I just used a little black paint marker for his eyebrows. But here's the thing: when I I did the first couple coats of uh, paint, I don't know why I was being cheap using these little thin brushes because it just came out. You can see every brush stroke and look just like garbage. And I had another pack of brushes and I used this wide one and this this basically saved the whole figure I got all through them and you couldn't see any brush strokes with this so don't be cheap yeah right there the lighting in this room is pretty bad but that is that's the look right there if you're gonna take a picture of it I mean that's the way I want to you know I want you to remember it I'm super proud of this figure, but every time I look at it, I see another imperfection. I want to go back and fix it and do this or that, but I got to move on to another project, which I already started. Because I got like an evolution going on here of my talents as becoming a, a custom action figure maker. We started with Venom, who I sculpted on top of a dollar store figure. And my painting, well, he was just black and all I did was draw on his eyes. But I was not good enough to make a Venom symbol. But obviously, I figured out how to do that on Punisher, and this came out pretty good. But yet again, that was me sculpting on top of another dollar store figure. And his bo the, the bodies of these two guys, it was kind of slave to what the proportions were underneath. This figure had to have a cartoony look in order to fit in with the, the other figures of what this was supposed to fit into the line, but I got something a little, we're going to evolve into something else, a little, a little tougher. A full on five point of articulation figure. This is my prototype, which I already made and he moves. I ain't going to explain how I made him yet go into that in a future video but look at that it's held together by a rubber band that's green stuff and clay but he's got pegs in there and I made them this is me completely making a figure top to bottom superstar he was just unmovable that's why I made him but I want to do something from scratch complete. Now this is the evolution of me making a figure from scratch now with articulation. So that's my next project. I actually made two. So one, I'm probably gonna keep one just because I don't know, I think this is cool just as it is. And maybe I'll, this'll be the one that I sculpt on top of. It's kind of like a primitive looking version of a Micronaut. Each of my customs, they're in evolutions. Like I know I can sculpt better. I know I can paint better. I know I can engineer better. And this is just an evolution. I started from nowhere and now I'm all the way up to this. I'm just excited to see where I go next on this stuff. So stick around. This, this figure might take months and months and months to turn into something. It's probably going to be Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing or The Flash? I got like a list of like 20 figures I want to make, but this is definitely the next. So like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff.